Geeks and Gamers, Matt Lenke here with your Gamer Goggles, and we are at Origins Game Fair, day three, I can still count. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's day four, actually, for me, but, you yeah, know. It depends on when you came, I guess. Yeah. Usually, I'm, I'm usually in on Wednesday, but uh, I'm with Eric Mona. Hopefully, most of you know who he is, and we are going to talk about some things, Pathfinder, but not all things. Yes. And, oh, and Starfinder. Yes. So, we're going to start with uh, Horror Adventures, which I did not see coming actually. Really? Well, normally I see a lot of stuff you guys have coming. Mm. I was, I should have seen it with the um, occult book last year. I should have seen it coming, and and I didn't really foresee it. So I'm, I'm not a big horror person, but I'm kind yeah. of excited about this because I want to see what you guys are going to do with like monsters and stuff. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. I mean, Horror Adventures is the uh, new hardcover rulebook for Pathfinder coming out in um, uh, actually late July early August timed for a Gen Con release and it's kind of the that's where we reserve for our biggest release of the year you know and so we've put a lot of effort into Horror Adventures it's a 256 page rule book for Pathfinder um, and it covers all aspects of horror um, and by that I mean uh, anywhere from advice to GMs about how to terrify your players to a revamping of the uh, fear system in the game to have more gradient levels of terror oh, cool. Um, all the way to my favorite part of the book, which is what we're calling corruptions. And so corruptions are like, okay, you were uh, you were bit by a guy with long teeth, you know, yesterday. And this morning when you woke up, uh, you didn't really like the sunlight that well, but you could see in the dark. You know, do you want to embrace that new power, or do you want to push that away? And so it, it puts kind of the onus on the players a little bit to decide how much they want to embrace, you know, becoming a werewolf, or becoming a vampire, or becoming suffused with shadow, or what have you. So in lieu of new classes in this book, there are no new classes, we've done lots of classes already. This is like things, like, almost like templates you can lay on top of your uh, character to really explore that, you know... Uh, turn into the dark side kind of a thing. And it, you don't even have to be evil, right? I mean, you can... Yeah, you could be a paladin. You could be a paladin. I mean, the paladin probably doesn't want to embrace the darkness so much. Mm -hmm. But you could. Um, and uh, there's just lots of rules for the different steps of what happens as you kind of become more and more monstrous, in a way. So how much resistance do they have once the steps start? I mean... It, it, it gets it, harder. It's, it's a it does get harder. slope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny, too, because um, I'm in a, a weekly Pathfinder game run by Jason Bowman, the the, the, the kobolds designer. Uh, there's the kobolds are still trying, man. We're twelfth <laughs> level, and we're still the, there's some nasty kobolds in this, in this campaign. But um, so uh, so I'm there as a gamer, but I'm also there as you know Paizo's chief creative officer and publisher, and he's the head, uh, you know, the lead designer for the company. And so we end up trying out a lot of new stuff in this campaign, and and we've got a. A player, Dan, who's really impulsive. You know, he's a, it's it's his first Pathfinder campaign. Um, really, I think it's his first long time RPG campaign, and he's playing kind of your. Uh, uh, I don't want to say typical because there's nothing really typical about his character, but he, your typical like chaotic neutral rogue. You know, he's always okay. two rooms ahead of the group, opening yep. up new trouble while we're still dealing with the trouble he opened up. You know, several rounds ago, um, and he. Uh, he had that journey, you know, where he was, uh, we fought a shadow creature, slowly but surely, he started, color started fading from his body. Could and, be such a and, good color. And, and, and it, you know, he keeps getting new powers, it's like, oh, and you can jump from shadows to another shadow, and, and you could just see the temptation on this guy, you know, he's playing chaotic neutral for a reason, you know, and so he's like... Oh, yeah, <laughs> embrace it. And I'm, I'm playing a lawful good, you know, cleric of Iomade, the god of justice, yeah. and valor and stuff. But I'm just like, what are you oh. doing? Oh. You know, yeah, I really was, was not happy with his character. But it was really fun to watch that progression. And, you know, Jason's just, like, cackling behind He's the He's loving screen. it. I'm loving it. He couldn't have yeah. been better if he so gave it tarot it's, it's, a, it's, it's a fun, like, tool uh, to add a little bit of uh, horror elements to the game. And, you know, of course, there's also gear, you know, for fighting uh, monsters, and, and uh, there's new uh, archetypes, and there's new uh, spells, um, of course, yeah. feats. All that good stuff. You know, yeah, so you can new really artifacts. just trick out your character to be, uh, like, a monster hunter, or, um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff with madness in the book. So it's really cool. Like, Occult Adventures is very much like the occult side of stuff, like psychics and... and uh, uh, things like that, and there's obviously a lot of crossover between those two things. I think those two books work particularly well together, but you don't need one to enjoy the other. They're just kind of 
two sides of the same coin, and the horror side is the much more horrific, you know. Two face crosses out the the much the, more the supernatural. Face. Yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah, or much more horror esque. You know, scary monsters, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah, and then uh, kind of branching off from horror adventures in August, we're launching the uh, Strange Eons Adventure Path, which is uh, based on the uh, writings of H.P. Lovecraft and the mythos of H.P. Lovecraft. And so uh, that's been something people have requested from almost the beginning. We've dabbled in it before. Whenever we've done it before, people have been really excited about it. So we're doing a whole adventure path where you're wow. fighting against, uh, you know, the, the mythos. You're engaging with uh, the King in Yellow and Carcosa, and you get to meet the mad Arab Abdul al Hazrid who wrote the Necronomicon. You know, it's uh, lots of fun stuff. If you're into Lovecraft, um, there's lots of cool stuff coming with Strange Eons. And one of the really cool things is we've become friends with uh, the guys over at Chaosium. We, at the office, when we're not playing Pathfinder, we generally are playing Call of Cthulhu, which is one of our favorite, favorite games. And uh, we worked out a deal with Chaosium where not only will we have access to the, sort of the public domain monsters, you know, stuff that Lovecraft himself or his friends wrote in the 20s and things that have fallen out of copyright, and thus everyone can use them. That's why you see Cthulhu dolls all over the place. You know, it's uh, paying a license to keep that. I was all doing that. Yeah. And, but a lot of what people think of when they think of the Cthulhu mythos actually comes from Chaosium and from the Call of Cthulhu game. And so there's lots of different creatures that you you can't really access. And so we've made a deal with Chaosium where we're bringing those creatures to Pathfinder um, nice. as well. Yeah, so that's really, really neat. And uh, it's going to be more mythos goodness or badness, depending on your point of view, I guess, um, or horror, um, all throughout uh, August to February of next year in the Pathfinder Adventure Path. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And then, of course, the recent big announcement, Starfinder. Yes, yes, it PaizoCon. Yeah, just so Finder and Star, I wonder where that came from. Yeah, well, uh, hey, it's like a two it great tastes that go great together. So, I, here's, as soon as you announced it, yeah. I, I was like, okay, is this going to tie in to the Pathfinder universe? Yeah, it just does. Many, many years, so right. it's still the same society. Yes, yeah, and, and so, but, but there's some very important differences, and so... Technology would uh, be better. Well, yes, <laughs> it's a science fantasy game, and so what it does is it's a possible future of the Galarian, which is the world of the Pathfinder, and it's oh. roughly, I'd say, about 3,000 years in the future. We're not saying exactly uh, how long, because there's a very important event, which is that the whole world of Galarian itself is missing. The, the planet itself is gone. The, the, there's no Galarian to speak of. What's left of Galarian is the colonies that its starfaring societies have launched and settled on some of the other planets in its system, and then a big free-floating space station called Absalom Station, which uh, has lots of you know representatives from Galarian, but the planet itself was basically whisked away by the gods. They won't say where it is. They won't say why the only thing they'll say is that it's still around and you know it's destroyed but you can't access it and we did that for a lot of different reasons one of which is we wanted to explore the worlds of galarian star system and the worlds beyond but which we've dabbled with in books like distant worlds before but we didn't want everyone to focus so much on galarian we didn't want the the story of uh starfinder to be well what happened to my character you know, my Pathfinder character. What happened to Cheliax? What happened to Varicia? Yeah, it doesn't matter, you know? And so what we've done is we've basically whisked that away, and it's about not going backwards, but it's about going forwards. So what's happened is, during the period when that planet vanished, uh, there's, a, there's a phenomenon where, uh, you know, basically history is unknown, right? Like the, the hard drives are wiped, you know, records are lost, and that's kind of referred to as the gap. And do, no one knows exactly what happened during the gap. It was 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's a while ago. And now what's happened recently is uh, AI has ascended to godhood and has granted faster-than-light technology to the people of Galarian star system. And now the race is on to go colonize other planets, to venture outside the system. And it's really like a game wow. about frontier and about discovery and about what's 
new and what's happening in the future, not necessarily about what's happening in the past. And that said, we do love the, you know, James Sutter, who's the creative director of the lines, also the guy who wrote Distant Worlds and created most of the planets in our solar system. And so we wanted to explore some of that stuff. We wanted there to be remnants of Galarian and Pathfinder in there, but really this is about moving forward. Um, in that spirit, uh, some of the rules we're, we're getting in, we're really opening up the, the engine and messing with some of the rules. So it is compatible with Pathfinder, uh, but it is not, you know, hand and glove compatible with Pathfinder. So if you, for instance, wanted your uh, Starfinder um, soldier character to face off against an orc, you could pull the bestiary, the Pathfinder bestiary off the shelf and just use the orc stat block and add some power armor and a chain sword or something like that. Um, but you'd take a little bit of fiddling to do that, right? There's a different skill list, for example. Um, we're trying to make the rules simpler um, and easier to comprehend. Pathfinder was really kind of like, came out of Paizo's desire to continue publishing after our magazine licenses were gone, and after th just doing straight 3.5 uh, D&D didn't make sense anymore because you wouldn't be able to buy the books in stores. So when we did Pathfinder, it was very much kind of like a preaching to the choir sort of a presentation. You know, it's like, you guys kind of know how to play this, but we're going to fix it up. You know, a lot of people call it 3.75, for example. And without the context of 3.5 or knowing how to play, uh, Heavy. It's heavy, you know, it's yeah, 576 heavy. pages, right? right? And so it was Starfinder, we're trimming down the rules, making it a little easier to understand, uh, working a lot on visual presentation of the rules, on examples, stuff like that. Um, we really want this to be a game people can pick up and play. I see a lot of potential in the future for not only the role playing, but card game, board game. Yeah, I, I mean, mean I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Yeah, a territory but, but, board game. Spain. Yeah, it's been really interesting to watch people's reaction to the to the news. You know, everybody kind of like it sparks something a little different in everybody. You know, oh, that, let's do a tabletop, uh, you know, starship combat game, that, or you know, like you just said, let's do some card right. stuff. Right now, we're focused on the RPG, right? You know, I would imagine a couple years worth. In the RPG is actually we're taking a very different approach to Starfinder than we do with Pathfinder. Pathfinder is kind of your full service fantasy RPG. We've got player books and we've got GM books and we've got three to four hardcovers a year, and we've got accessories and all that kind of stuff. Right now, for Starfinder, what we've got is the core rule book, probably one hardcover book a year, and then really how we're supporting it is through the adventure path. We're doing a new Starfinder adventure path as well. Part of the problem with a lot of science fiction uh, or science fantasy systems in the past is they haven't been real heavy on adventures. True. Adventures is kind of Paizo's specialty. And so we wanted to take what we've learned with Pathfinder and apply it to the science fantasy uh, realm uh, through a Starfinder adventure path. So that'll be launching in August 2017 at the same time as the Starfinder uh, core rulebook. And that will be the main way that we release content for the game. And Just those two, like it's not even two brands, it's one brand, it's Starfinder. So for example, uh, you know, if you subscribe on Paizo.com, you just one subscription to get the rule books and the adventure path. Okay. Yeah. So we're just using it as a way to experiment with some different models, both in terms of game design and in terms of like how we sell products and stuff. Now, um, is your Starfinder release going to be slated for Gen Con next year? Gen Con 2017. So yeah, not yeah. this Gen Con, but the Gen Con. Yeah. And will Gen you still do a big Pathfinder release at Gen Con then? Uh, that remains to be seen. We haven't really announced what we're doing. Um, we, we wanted to get out way ahead of this news because... You know, when you're doing something this big, there's always a chance of it leaks, and you know, we just wanted to. Uh, we're also going to involve a lot of third-party publishers to help out with various, like uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of adventures and supplements and things that they're going to do, and so we wanted to make sure that we that they were on board and things, and so we're way further out on announcing Starfinder stuff than we are on announcing even Pathfinder stuff. So, okay, yeah. What else you want to add? Is oh boy, gonna, I don't know. Starfinder miniatures line? Uh, five, years five years from now, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, hard to say right now. You know, um, we've oh. got some good partners in the miniatures realm, and, and if they're interested in doing Starfinder miniatures, we'd be happy to have them do it. I was going to ask: Do yeah. any races disappear, or all the? the same? That's a good question. Um, 
The only race from Pathfinder that is done up fully in the core rulebook is human. Everything else is, is alien and weird. There is going to be presently a Pathfinder sort of legacy appendix that is going to give you the new rules for elves, dwarves, gnomes. So in a way, all of the existing races are going to be in the core rulebook. They just aren't necessarily going to have the spotlight shown on them in the same way that humans are. And then we're taking some of our other races that we've developed for some of our space stuff that we've already done, like Lashunta and uh, Ksatha and the, uh, androids. the androids and the rat folk uh, are big on uh, the, the red planet of Akaton and so they're our main race and then a couple of brand new ones that we haven't really announced yet but that are even more alien than that um, and uh, so yeah we want again it's all about kind of embracing the new and, and moving forward and, and less about looking like, backwards but that said we know people are going to want to play space elves and space dwarves and stuff like that and, and they, they obviously still exist within the realm of this being a continuation of the Pathfinder uh, setting and so uh, they'll be in there. They could have been whisked away with the planet. Well most of them probably were but we've already established for example that the elves have a colony on the green planet of Castorville and have and maybe even be from that planet originally you know if you like read deep into the lore of Pathfinder. And so there, there's elves on our Venus analog. Um, so we've already got those guys, right? Now whether there's a big halfling community or gnomes, I guess time will tell. Okay. Anything you want to add? Jeez, I don't know. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm spending a lot of time on uh, recently is the uh, comic, the, the Pathfinder comic. From oh, you're writing another one. I am, yeah. I'm writing uh, the new series that they're going to announce just in a little bit here, which is going to be a big major crossover of a lot of Dynamite's fantasy properties. So we're going to have Pathfinder crossover with Red Sonia, John Carter of Mars, uh, oh my uh, gosh. Tarzan, uh, Frank Frazetta character Thunder. Uh, that's a six-issue series called Pathfinder Worldscape, and I'm going to be writing that. I've already turned in the first three scripts. I've got some uh, about first issue is about halfway done. It looks like it's going to come out in October. It's not been formally announced yet. So we mentioned it at PaizoCon, and there'll be a formal announcement in advance of San Diego Comic Con, but I'm just thrilled to be working on that project. I've been yeah. trying to put it together for quite some time. Bet you are. Yeah, it's really up my alley. It's like comics and pulp stuff all smushed together. It's like basically where I live. No, that, so. That's one thing I regret doing. I, in high school, I was collecting like 400 titles. Wow! Um, I worked Back when they were twenty five cents or seventy five cents or something. Yeah, they were like yeah. And I worked for my mom and dad, and so I, and, you know, I just had money to burn, so right. I burned it, and I would just, I actually I bought double, mm. so I would put one away, mm -hmm. and boom, but I sold it for a missions trip. And the biggest thing I regret looking back is that I stopped collecting. Yeah. Comics. Well, but I had to. So. Yeah, and if you'd been doing it all along, you might look at eighty long boxes in your closet and wish that maybe you'd made a different choice. So, I had you know. 22 when I graduated <laughs> Well, there you go. So, yeah, it's 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 time consuming. It takes a lot of time, a lot of money. But, Matt, there's always room for Dynamite to have minor I, I actually regret not buying the last couple sets. Hey, well, you can get them in hardcover. I, I, I want to get the hardcovers, yeah. yeah. Um, do you do a spine picture with those? Um, not with those. But you do it with something Well, else? it's no, not really. Oh, okay. We don't really do it, period. Uh, it, uh, I've seen it done well. Um, Dynamite themselves do the do the hardcovers, so they've got a format that they use for all their stuff that I don't want to get in their way. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. But hey, thank you, guys. Uh, Eric's got to run to another meeting, so see you guys at Gen Con. Absolutely. Thank you. Great to see you again, Matt. Always a pleasure. See you around.